I'm uh, Jonathan Weintraub. Along with me is Kfir Damari, and uh, we will talk about a little bit about Space IL, um, what it is, and uh, what we're trying to accomplish here. So the moon, you must be recognizing that. Until to this date, only two countries have landed on the moon, the United States with the Apollo mission, and before that they had an unmanned mission that is called Soveo, and uh, the Soviet Union, or the Russian, or the Russian Jews, I don't know, actually. Um, <laughs> had a Lunokhod uh, uh, mission. The mission of Space IL, our mission here, is to make Israel the third country to softly land on the moon, having the Israeli flag placed on the moon. Thank you. So, all right, so this is the image um, of, the space, of the spaceship on the moon. What we're thinking of is the impact of such an image on the Israeli um, pride as an Israelis, we are able to accomplish something like that. As the Israeli image around the world is not just a startup nation, it's also taking us to the moon. And of course, the most important part here is education. A lot of you must know these images and what they resemble. It resembles a great achievement. And when kids see something like that, they want to go and do something similar. They want to go and turn to science and technology. Some of them want to be astronauts. And today, this is something that's a little bit missing. Everybody wants to be in a reality show, reality TV. They don't want to study science. And by doing that and showing the kids that it is possible, that it is possible to put something on the moon, we're hoping to get them into science and technology and go and pursue careers in that direction. The framework under which we are working is called the Google Lunar X Prize. Google Lunar X Prize has a pretty simple three rules. Simple, you'll see why. First is you need to land on the moon. Hmm? Yeah. Then you need to travel for 500 meters or uh, 11, uh, 1,500 uh, feet. You need to transmit images back. You don't need to return. Just bring the images back, and you're getting a check of, for $20 million. Now, we are a not-for-profit organization. We're not a company. We're going to donate the entire sum to promoting science and technology education among youth. So we're not in it for the money, we're in it to make an impact. Google Lunar X Prize is, is the new space race. Its goal is to get to the moon. There are teams from all over the world. There are about 29 teams along with us that's competing for that prize. And we're the only team from Israel, and we consider ourselves the Israeli team competing in that competition. We started about six months ago. We were three guys sitting in a bar having this idea. This idea usually comes up in the bar. And today, we're over 90 volunteers working in that project, promoting this and taking us uh, to the moon. Now, apart from these volunteers, these talented young people, that they are the Google and Apple of, of this aerospace industry that's working for this project, we also have a lot of support from people um, that have the scientific background as well as the uh, commercial background, for example. We're supported by the chief scientist uh, in the Ministry of Science, by the president of Weizmann Institution, by the president of Tel Aviv University. And from the commercial side, we're supported for leading uh, um, CEOs. For example, Zohar Lev Levkovich, who uh, was announced just a few months ago as the uh, entrepreneur of the year for 2011 for California. He's also with us in this project. But apart from the amazing people that work in, in this and making this happen, we also get support from a lot of leading aerospace companies and high-tech companies. For example, you can see here IAI's logos. That's the main contractor for building all the Israeli satellites. Uh, these, these guys are doing that. This is the place I work for. Uh, we also got a lot of uh, Israeli uh, institutions. You can recognize the logos of Tel Aviv University, Technion, and others. And we got the Israeli high-tech into this, bringing new technology, cutting aim technology into this amazing project. All right. So how are we going to do it? How are we going to win? Sometimes that's, it, it, this is the first question that comes in mind. Well, Israel aerospace industry has a relative advantage in the world. This advantage uh, is, is fulfilled in making small things work. Israel is capable of doing small satellites the size of a minivan. Uh, as, as for the rest of the industry around the world, it takes a bus or even bigger than that to construct the same, the same satellite. The reason they are doing that comes from military necessity, or it originated in a military necessity pretty much like the Israeli high-tech that started off 
as something the military needed, and then they took the technology and made it civilianly available. And we're now in a, in a unique place in time that the same thing happens with science, with satellite technology, that is, is, we are able to take the cutting edge technology that is, has been built for military serve purposes and to make that into a civilian purpose. And this is what we are doing. Now, we're building the smallest spaceship ever to land on the moon. How small is that going to be? Okay, so you have here the Apollo lander, and you have, let's say, Neil Armstrong, and our spaceship is right just there. So it, we're a small country, we're building small satellites in small countries. So it's, it's going to be the smallest spaceship ever to land on the moon, and this is a, a demonstrator. Once you can do small stuff, it costs you a lot less money, so now you can do a lot more science landing the small spaceships. You can do actually 10 of those instead of one, the big ones, and you can do a lot more science, not on the moon, but on asteroids, on Mars, and so on and so forth. You can, always, uh, uh, you can imagine where else. Now, I want to give you a little bit of an x-ray view of how this thing is going to work and how it's, uh, it's constructed. Okay. The Israeli high-tech technology has the miniaturized capabilities that are, are able to, t to make a spaceship so small that its computer, it's about the size of your iPhone. Right? So you can think of it as an iPhone sitting on a rocket that takes it all the way to the moon, and all the, con all the guidance and, and video imaging and all the, uh, the smart stuff that it's supposed to do is actually in this box, green box, and all the rest is just uh, uh, the propellant is, is designed to take it all the way to the moon. So this is how it works. Now, I said we, were, we started off six months ago, and we actually, uh, you weren't aware of that probably, but uh, a few weeks ago, we were actually launching the first rocket propellant experiment to prove the landing sensors for the spaceship. Now, you know Israel has a small problem with rockets, and it's not so easy to launch one, <laughs> but we we're very happy that we were able to get the clearance from the Israeli government to perform the launch, and we're actually the first non-governmental body in Israel that is capable of launching something in Israel. <laughs> so, authorized, of course. All right, so this is the launch of when I, I want to go to the studio. Three, two, one. And bam. Yeah! You can realize the excitement. Woo! A lot of people it's thought it's going to blow up. It's Madlik. Wow, wow. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, it may seem easy, you know, just switch on the button, but we did a lot of, uh, here you can see, by the way, uh, the view from the cameras installed in the spaceship. Um, you can see the tracking there. Uh, we're actually testing new algorithm to do that. It's not based on radar. For those of you who have some, some background, it's based on visual inspection. So you can see the green dots there uh, that it's, it's the tracker tracking down the speed and how it's approached towards the, in here, it's, uh, it's uh, Emek Ben Shean, um, it's in, it's, it will be used in, uh, on the moon, and here you can see a soft touch done on the grass. Um, but of course, that will work pretty much the same on the moon. This is another experiment we had. This one also didn't blow up. I didn't want to bring those who blew up. That's, uh, 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 that was done in the Technion. Um, you need to test the motor, rotor motor to see that it doesn't blow up under the pressure of the gas flowing out, and it did succeed, so we were pleased with that, and after that went to launch. Um, but before those experiments, we did another one with, with helicopter. So the purpose of the helicopter was to take the payload there uh, to 150 meters up, up in the air, and then release that, and we can see the same data coming down without the rocket, because rockets are pretty hard to build there. So we started testing that with the uh, uh, helicopter first. This is the image we're going to transmit from the spaceship. We, the rules of the competition tells us we need to take a portrait image of the spaceship. And this, is the, this or something like that will be transmitted to Earth. And this is the image that's going to show we are able to land on the moon. We're able to do that in the smallest spaceship ever that is going to do that. And we are able to do that with Israeli technology. So this is what we're going to show to the world. And we're really, really excited to do so. And, and we'll be very proud to do so as well. Now, a, lot, a little bit about budget and timeline. We're talking about a small sh spaceship, so small sh spaceships cost a small amount of money. You can see a small spaceship, small amount of money, small country. You can see the small uh, uh, paradigm there. Uh, it's a privately funded uh, project. We're not allowed to take funding from the government. This is the rules of the competition. Now, what will happen the day after we land on the moon? This is something we're asked oftenly. Um, is the project over once we are on the moon? Then no. We have the education. 
part. And this is, must continue uh, onwards. The prize will go to promoting education among, uh, and science among youth. And we are already working with a lot of bodies to get the message uh, going, all right? So we, you can see this uh, logo here. This is the Israeli ski channel. We're the only not-for-profit organization in Israel has something that has something as excited as going to the moon that we are able to go to the prime time of the television and present that to kids on their prime time view and, and drone them towards science and technology. This is something that no other not-for-profit is, is capable of doing in Israel. We also have a lot of collaborations of many others not-for-profit to bring our materials and these exciting materials towards the students. And we are already um, approaching a lot of kids. Uh, in the past few months, we were able to reach 2,000 kids. And we're planning to do, uh, to uh, reach, before we, we reach the moon, to go to about uh, 5 to 10 percent of the Israeli uh, youth and also we have some programs for youth in the United States. So we are really excited about this and we want to get the kids towards science and technology and this is, all, this is what pays the ride. Now, if this excites you, I want to I wanna, do you a call for, I want to present you a call for action. Now we need funding, but if you're not, uh, if this is not the path that you're willing to take, it's also very important for us to have your support you know, go to our Facebook. We have some stickers here um, with, a, with a bunny on them, so you might uh, get one of those either for me and, or Kfir. But go to our Facebook, go to our websites, get involved. If you want to get your communities involved, you have the kids there uh, uh, going to our website, seeing the materials there, participating. We got kids which are 15 years old that are selecting the landing site for the spaceship. Now think of it, when I was 15, if they let me choose where the first Israeli spaceship is going to land on the moon, I mean, wow. So we are uh, giving these options to these kids, and we're really excited about this. And I want to just finish with, uh, one, with this sentence. This will be one big step for Israel, but one giant leap for the Jewish people. <laughs> Thank you.